Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hogue, author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. That is my website effortlessenglishclub.com. Join my VIP program. You can try it for $1. Speaking of VIP, VIP members, some of my VIP members made their own discussion group, their own chat group. They get together, they chat on Skype together to practice their English. Now, these guys, they're really fantastic. They have improved a lot with their English. They're very, very good, very, very motivated. So I encourage you to do the same. You know, people get on Gab and they say, can I join your group? Everybody wants to join their group, but their group's already, you know, fairly big. So you can just do the same thing that they did, right? How did they get better? Well, they joined my VIP program. They did the lessons every day, every day very motivated, and then they made their own group, right? They just decided, let's hey, let's get together and practice. You know, a bunch of VIP members, let's uh, get together. We can figure out a time to chat. They're really good. They like to have people from different parts of the world because they enjoy learning about different cultures and uh, meeting people from different parts of the world. So they have people from all over. So it's really fantastic. I think that's a good model for you. So get on Gab. That's why I have the Gab group. If you're watching on video, you can see gab.com. AJ Hogue is my A-J-H-O-G-E. That's my profile. That's my account on Gab. If you go to my account on Gab, when you go there, you'll see at the top, I have a link to our group, the Effortless English group on Gab. Gab is just social media. It's like Twitter. So that's the place you can meet other Effortless English members. So if you want to have a group of people to practice with, to chat with, and, and you don't need to pay money, free, create your own, you know, organize your own, take the initiative, right? Take the action yourself. Go to the Gab group and say, I'm creating, I'm making a new chat group, a new practice group. Who wants to join? If you want to join, you know, uh, comment, comment below. Give me your Skype ID or your email address or you can use any app. Some groups use Skype. You could use Line. You could use WhatsApp. You know, I don't know. Zoom. You could use Zoom for sure. So it doesn't matter. You decide. You create your own group. That's what they did. That's what my, you know, I kind of call them my superstar VIP group because they, their English is so fantastic and they are so motivated, everything fantastic. Well, do what they did. They made a group and they all improved together. Now you do the same, right? Make your, make your own group. A lot of people are interested, so it should be easy to find a few other people. And then you just uh, choose a time and use an app like Skype or Zoom. And then you can talk once per week. You could talk one time per month. You could talk every day. <laughs> it's your choice. Okay, so I encourage you to do that. Very, 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 very uh, great way to get some extra practice. And I'm, I'm teaching right now. I'm teaching. I have two private students. Now, here in Japan, so face-to-face. -face. I don't usually do this. <laughs> in fact, I never, ever, ever do this. But uh, this is a special case because they are two of my jujitsu instructors. So they, they're, they're already teaching me jujitsu every week, three times per week. So uh, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to help them. They want to learn English because next year they are going to America. They're going to America to do a, like a instructor, a, a jiu-jitsu instructor uh, seminar. 
So they will, of course, they will meet a lot of uh, other Americans, maybe other people too, other countries too, probably international, all going, it's in, I think they're going to California. I know they're going to California. So it's a great opportunity. They can go and do jujitsu and also they will, of course, meet a lot of people. Most people don't speak Japanese. Most people speak English, uh, especially in America. So they want to improve their English. So I'm teaching them every week, privates. But they're also joining the Skype group so they can do get extra practice to chat. So this is just, it's a great way to do it. You don't need, if people say, oh, I, I, there's no one in my country to talk to. Well, it doesn't matter. You can talk to people in other countries. You can talk to other VIP members or just other effortless English members of any kind. And uh, it's great for speaking practice. For listening, well, you listen to me, you listen to audiobooks, you listen to videos, you listen to native speakers. Okay, so that's the difference. When you're talking... You don't need native speakers. You can talk to anybody. Just talk to anybody who understands English, even other people who are learning, like you. For listening, that's when you have audios and videos and lessons that you can use, and you get you know the the correct grammar, the correct accents, all that thing. So it's really, really, really fantastic. Today we're going to learn with a short video. It's actually a jujitsu black belt. <laughs> And he's talking about um, having bad days. Now, he's talking about um, jujitsu, but this really is true for most things, okay? Because people have the same problem. People will say, you know, oh, someday, sometimes my English is really bad, right? Sometimes my, uh, my, my listening is terrible. I can't understand. And other times... My listening is much better. I understand almost everything. Why, AJ? Why do I have some days good, some days bad? Or some days I can talk, I can say what I'm, what I want to say, I can communicate well. And other days I can't remember words. Uh, my grammar's terrible. My pronunciation's terrible. Uh, it's, it's, everything's terrible. Is this normal? Well, let's go and let's listen to the video. You'll learn maybe a little vocab with this too, a couple idioms. And then we'll talk about the topic, and I'll come to the live chat at the end. If you're on watching live now, just relax and wait. And also, please comment in English. Two rules for our chat. I, I, I need to do this every time. Remind you of the rules of the live chat. Number one, please comment in English, because we're all learning English. <laughs> and it's the only language we all share. And number two, don't spam the comments. Write your comment or your question one time only. Okay? You don't need to write. Some people will try to keep putting it in three, four, five, ten, twelve, constantly doing it. And when you do that, I have to block you because other people can't comment. That You're, you're filling up the, the chat too much. So please comment in English and just one time per question. You can ask different questions. That's okay. You can do that. That's fine. All right, let's get into our chat. I'm just going to play it first and see how much you understand. Then I'll come back and explain it. All right, here we go. Yeah, so you got a bad day. First off, let's talk about is this normal? This spectrum of ability, right? These good days and these bad days. Is this normal? 100%. 100% normal. It's completely normal. And I have them too. I have bad days. The difference with me is that because my skill level is so high in comparison to most, my like bad days are here, right? So I'm like, these are my good days, here's my bad days. And then where most people, their good days are down here, and their bad days are really low. So I have a bit of a buffer of skill. So most people wouldn't notice. The only time you might notice is if I was rolling with another black belt who's very close to my skill level, then you'll start to see the, the chinks in my armor become exposed and see where I'm messing up. Right, and I'll even experience this. Whereas with the other people, a lot of times I can get away with stuff. It was different when I was like a white belt and a blue belt where I remember being tit for tat with people or maybe just a little bit better. And then I would have a bad day and then I was down here and they would get the better of me. So I, I understand that experience that you're going through. And you know, you're going to have these good days and bad days. But before I get into that real quick, let's... Okay. That's good enough. Uh, let me move my screen around a little bit. 
Okay, let's go back, and now I'll, I will explain things here a little bit. So there's a few words. I'll just tell you, let me uh, just tell you a few words or phrases to listen for. I'm going to rewind it here. Okay, so here's a few I wrote down. For spectrum, spectrum is a word you'll hear. Buffer. Chinks in the armor. That's an idiom. Chinks in the armor. To mess up, you probably know that already. Uh, to get away with something, to get away with. And tit for tat, tit for tat. So these, these are a few of the uh, vocab words. Let's go here. Let me just check, make sure you guys can hear me okay. Okay, good. Here we go. So let's go back. Now I'll help you understand a little more. You got a bad day. First off, let's talk about, is this normal? Okay, so you had a bad day. Is this normal? He's talking about jujitsu, which is martial arts, kind of wrestling, kind of wrestling. But uh, this this is also true for English or anything else you're learning. Is it normal to have a bad day sometimes? Like some days you're good, and then suddenly one day, like your English is terrible, your listening's terrible, your speaking is terrible. Is this normal? Why, why does this happen? Yeah, let's talk about it. This spectrum of ability. Okay, this spectrum of ability, there's our first word, spectrum. Spectrum means range, range, right? Not one point, not one point. Like, for example, if you were always exactly the same with your English every day, that would be like one point. Like you're always, you know, one exact same level every day. But maybe some days your English is... It's, Sometimes it's a little worse. It's a lower ability. In other days, I don't, who knows why, some days your English seems to be much better. It's, it's a higher ability. So you have a, a low point and a high point, and it changes each day. That's a range, right? Low to high, high to low. We can also call that a spectrum, a spectrum. It's a kind of range. Right, these good days and these bad days. Is this normal? 100%. 100% normal. It's completely normal. And so is this normal? Yes, it's 100% normal. 100% normal. Yes, yes, yes. He's saying, of course, this is very normal. It's normal in sports. It's normal in life. <laughs> and I have them too. I have bad days. The difference with me is that because my skill level is so high. Okay, so he says, of course, it's normal. And I. it happens to me too. So he's a black belt. He's a high level black belt. He's very good at jiu-jitsu very good fighter so he's saying yeah i have bad days too but there's a difference it's a difference between someone like me i'm a blue belt in jiu-jitsu it's just it's still kind of a beginner belt it's just there's white is the lowest and the next is blue i'm blue so he said there's a big difference like i have bad days too and good days he has bad days and good days but it's different because he's so good in comparison to most my like bad days are here Right, so I'm like, these are my good days, here's my bad days. And then where most people, their good days are down here, and their bad days are really low. Okay, so he's saying, here's the difference, right? He's comparing, so he says, in comparison, meaning comparing. Let's just say me and him. So he's saying that, you know, because he's high level, even his bad days, he's still very good, right? He's, he's using his hands. If you're only listening, if you're not watching the video, you can't see this, but he's using his hands. It's kind of showing. So basically saying, you know, his good days are very, very high. His bad days are lower, but they're still high, right? Compared to me, his bad day is fantastic, right? Like his bad day is still better than my best day. <laughs> I, right? So he, for him, it's a bad day, but for me, it would, it's still super, 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 super good. Right. So that's what he's saying. That's the difference. High level. Right. Whereas for me, right, like my good day is still kind of low and my bad day is very, very, very low skill. Now, this is true in uh, with English. You know, you and I, for example, I'm a native speaker. Right. So I grew up. It's my native language. I grew up as a baby learning English and, you know, 53 years old. So. Do I have do I have bad days with English even? And then the truth is yes, actually it is. You know, sometimes maybe I'm tired or or distracted or something. Like I'm doing a show, for example, like this, 
and I'm talking and and some days like uh, uh, you know my communication is not so good my speaking is not as good it's it's more difficult for me to you know sometimes I might forget the like the exact perfect word I'm trying I want to use I'll be like oh, oh what's that word what's that word and I can't remember it in the moment and maybe I'll make a few grammar mistakes and uh, even some maybe uh, I'm tired. I, I might even make a couple of pronunciation mistakes. But because my level's very, very, very high, you know, it still seems very good to you. And, and it is very good, right? It's still a very high level because I'm a native speaker and I do this, uh, you know, this is my job and I'm, I do this all the time. So even my bad days speaking English are still perfectly fluent and very, very good. <laughs> But for you, for some of you, especially if you're starting out now with Effortless English, you're just starting and you're maybe low intermediate level, your bad day might be really, really bad, <laughs> right? <laughs> like you maybe have a good day and ah, oh, you're communicating and it's okay, it's not so bad. But then you have a bad day and uh, you can't remember anything and you make constantly making mistakes, difficult just to make a full sentence, like everything feels bad. Your pronunciation is is terrible. It's all bad. It's, oh, today is so terrible. Why, right? It's the same range, but it's much lower. This is normal. So as you get better, your bad days are less bad. I talked about my VIP members you know, at the beginning of the show. So for them, their bad days now, they're not so bad. They're still fluent. They're still communicating very well. Yeah, like me, they might forget, you know, the perfect word they want to use and they have to say say it another way. But in general, they're communicating still very well, even on a bad day. So that's the, that's the great thing. As your skill goes up and up and up, your bad days are not so bad. But in the beginning and when you're lower level, bad days feel terrible. And can be very, very tough and very frustrating. So I have a bit of a buffer of skill. So most people wouldn't notice. The so he's calling this a buffer of skill, meaning that a buffer, a buffer is like padding, like padding, right? So it's like if you, if you fall down, you, you can hurt yourself. Ow. But if you're padding, if you have like an elbow pad or your, your whole body, you have something soft on your body. When you fall then it doesn't hurt so much. Or, like in jiu-jitsu, we use mats. We use this padding, this soft, soft floor. So when we fall, we fall, but there's something soft between us and the hard floor, right? That's, that's a buffer. There's a buffer between us, our body, and the hard floor. It's a pad. It's something soft. It's a buffer. So this is kind of the idea he's saying that when you have a high skill, you have a buffer, meaning that there's there's kind of padding like between it, it prevents you going too low right there's something between even your bad days are not so bad it's kind of the idea Oops, sorry here we go the only time you might notice is if i was rolling with another black belt okay he says the only time you might notice is when if i was rolling with another black belt rolling this is slang in jujitsu rolling means uh practice fighting sparring so he's saying you might notice the only time you'd notice he's having a bad day is if he's fighting against another person who's very high level. Like if he's fighting me, even a bad day, you 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 wouldn't know he's having a bad day because I can't challenge him. He's he's too good. I'm not good enough. He can beat me very. He could beat me very easily. But if he goes against someone very very top top level, high high skill. Ah, then maybe his bad day. Then you see him making mistakes. You see his, he's going to say chinks in the armor. Chinks in the armor. Chinks in the armor means weak points. It's an idiom. Chinks. So armor, like, you know, like knights or samurai, right? They would wear armor to protect themselves. But in, in the armor, there would be little weak points in the armor. And that's where that you could attack and hurt the person, right? Those are called chinks. Chinks in the armor. Weak points. So in general, when we're talking about it in general, it means weak points. He says you might see his weak points if he fights a high-level person. You might see his chinks in the armor. 
who's very close to my skill level, then you'll start to see the, the chinks in my armor become exposed and see where I'm messing up. Okay, and then you'll see where he's messing up. To mess up means to make a mistake. To mess up means to do something wrong, to make a mistake. So if you if he fights someone high level, then you might see him mess up. You might notice him making mistakes, messing up. Right, and I'll even experience this. Whereas with the other people, a lot of times I can get away with stuff. Whereas with other people, I can get away with stuff. Stuff just means things. Here he's talking about mistakes. To get away with something in this situation, to get away with something means that you're not punished. It means you do something wrong, but there's no bad result. There's no punishment, right? You got away with it. So we can use this with criminals. You can say he got away with the crime. Right? So let's say someone goes into a store, they steal something, and they say, I got away with it. I got away with it. I stole it. I got away with it. What does it mean? It means they, they did something bad, but there was no bad result, no punishment. Right? They weren't, no one, nobody caught them. Nobody caught them, so nothing bad happened. He's using this for fighting. He's saying, you know, if maybe he's fighting, doing jujitsu, and he makes a mistake, but nothing bad happens. He doesn't suffer anything, right? He gets away with the mistake. So again, if he was fighting me, he could make a lot of mistakes and get away with them, right? Because I'm too slow. I'm not good enough. He can make a mistake, but I can't, I can't do anything. I can't attack his mistake. Because I'm not good enough. So he, he would get away with the mistakes. He would make a mistake, but n have no bad consequence. He would make a mistake, but not get punished. All right, we got one more. Tit for tat is the next and last one. It was different when I was like a white belt and a blue belt, where I remember being tit for tat with people, or maybe just a little bit better. And then I would have a bad day, and then I was down here, and they would get the better of me. So Okay, so he's saying uh, this is different when I was just a white belt or a blue belt, so more of a beginner. I would be tit for tat with people. Tit for tat kind of me here means kind of equal. It means sometimes they win, sometimes you win, right? Or in this case, sometimes he would win, sometimes the other person would win, but kind of like 50-50, you know, about even, about the same level. Tit for tat, tit for tat it means they would do something, to him, but then he would do something to them. They would beat him, then he would beat them. Tit for tat. All right, that's all. So let's get back to our discussion now. So just a quick summary. Well, I'll review the vocab at the end again. But, uh, you know, just a quick summary of just the main idea. And this is just that our bad days, normal, and also sometimes good days. In other words, is it normal to have a range? And the, and the answer is absolutely yes. This range, this spectrum is normal. I'm sure in uh, many areas in your life, you have seen this, right? That, you know, sometimes we're tired. Sometimes there are many reasons. Maybe you didn't get enough sleep the night before. Uh, sometimes, you know, you're doing so much English and listening and listening and, and speaking and reading. And, you know, your brain maybe gets a little tired. And uh, you think, I'm, I'm working so much, but I'm having bad days. Why? Well, my, maybe just your brain's tired. You're, you're, it's just tired. And because of that, you have some bad days. But then later you get more rest. You get better sleep. Maybe you eat better food, <laughs> get better nutrition. And then you start having some good, really great days too, right? It happens depends on your emotions sometimes if you're if you're stressed or sad or have other problems in your life this can cause you to have bad days with speaking english and on the other hand if you're really happy and everything's great um and you feel energetic and wonderful and healthy this can actually help your english and you might have more good days speaking so i think that the the best advice here is don't get stressed about it Right. When you have bad days, I know because like he's talking about jujitsu and I totally understand this topic. 
I have bad days in jujitsu. Some days, uh, you know, some days I even cause myself to have bad days because I try, I'm trying new and difficult things. So, uh, it causes a bad day in a way. You might notice this too. Like if you listen to something very, very easy, or if you have, if you talk to someone in English, but it's about a very, uh, normal topic like the weather and your family and your job you know small talk we call this right kind of very common topics well maybe then you have a good day right it, because it feels easy it's 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 fairly easy topics for you these are fairly easy topics for you but on the other hand maybe uh Sometimes you push yourself and you try to read something very difficult. You try to listen to something much more difficult. Or you have a conversation about a topic that's less common, that's more difficult for you. And then you feel, oh, I had a bad day. I couldn't talk. I couldn't understand so much. Well, it's because you're trying something harder. It feels bad, but maybe actually it's not so bad. Right? This hap like I said, so this is in sports. You can see this. This happens to me in jujitsu. Some days, you know, like I, I have one day a week where I try, I, I, I work on bad positions. It means I put myself into bad positions and try to get out. Right? So this is hard to do. It's not so much fun sometimes. Right? I let someone almost choke me and then I have to get, and then I try to get out. I let someone get on top of me with pressure, and then I try to survive and get out. Um, so it feels like, oh, that was a bad day, but really it's because I'm trying something harder. And other days I'm doing, I'm doing things that are easier, and so it feels like a good day. So the point is, this normal up and down, try, try to relax about it. Don't get too focused on it. Don't get too upset when you have bad days. Just uh, have faith that you will get better, that you are getting better. Try to relax and enjoy the process more. So important. All right, let's get into our comments and questions. Let me take this off. Okay. Miriam says, hi from Georgia. Love your channel. Thank you. Thank you, Mar Miriam. Oh, yeah. Dana Usman says, I, uh, in our country, um, Kurdistan, Sulaimania, some people from the United States of America live here. And four days a week, they have a coffee shop time for practicing English. Yeah, that's nice. So, right. that's You can find this in, in many places. Uh, not always, but so you can often find uh, native speakers living in your country where you could maybe just meet them at a coffee shop and chat with them. I see that in Japan here sometimes. Some coffee shops, I'll see that. Other people doing that. Siracha, good to see you again. Nice to see you. Maram asks, is it okay if I listen to an audio book and look at the book without reading it? Yeah, without reading it. Yeah, that it's fine. You can you can listen to the audiobook and read along as you listen. Totally fine. Yes, that's good. Cicero, hey Cicero, good to see you again. Uh, AJ, you're one of the best American teachers in the world. Thank you. And Romulo from Brazil also. I think Cicero, Cicero, I think is from Brazil. Yeah, like Marco Santilli says, uh, he doesn't, or is it Santilli? Santilli? Santilli. He doesn't lose too much on his bad day because he's above the average. Exactly. And also he knows how to deal with the bad days. We have to be motivated when bad days come. That's a good point, Marco, that this is something else people who are good, who are high level, they learn how to deal with bad days better. 
They learn how to deal with their with mistakes and recover from mistakes better. That's that's a really good point, actually. That is true. That is that's kind of a skill too. So you'll see this. Let's say black belts in jujitsu. They make a mistake, but they know how to recover from the mistake. I don't know. Let's say they um, like in in jujitsu. It's not always, but it's often a mistake to make your arms straight to push to push the other person out like that especially if you're on the bottom. So um, if I do it, people attack my arm <laughs> and get it, usually. But if black belt can do that sometimes, it's a mistake, maybe. Not always, but maybe it's a mistake. But they're so fast, the other person tries to attack their arm and they defend very quickly. So they, they can deal with the mistake. They can recover from the mistake, right? They can correct the mistake much faster. And this is, of course, in English, the same. Like, so if I can't remember a word, like I'm trying to remember the perfect word, let's say spectrum, okay? I want to use spectrum. And I'm saying, ah, oh, yeah, a, uh, uh, and I, I, I can't remember it. For some reason, I can't remember it today. But I have a lot of other words I can use in English that have a similar meaning. So I can recover quickly. I'll say, uh, uh, what's that word? Uh, it doesn't matter. Range. So range of ability, right? So I, I, I've got... Other vocab I can get to very fast uh, because I have a higher level. Um, I, I'm fluent, obviously. I'm a native speaker. So someone lower level, maybe they don't have the other word or they can't remember the other word so quickly also. So then they're kind of, uh, uh, and they just kind of stop for a minute <laughs> trying to figure out, like, how do I say this? Right? That's, that is a big difference, the recovering from mistakes. You will always make mistakes, but as you get to higher levels, you recover from the mistakes, you correct the mistakes much more easily, much more quickly. Vu is asking, uh, how do you, what do you think if a learner practices English speaking with another one? If two learners are the same level, they cannot help each other correct the mistakes. Uh, oh, I just talked about it at the beginning of the show. Yeah, it's fine. To talk, talk. That's not the point. If you talk to another person who's learning English, your same level, let's say two low intermediate people. Okay. No, do not correct each other's mistakes. You cannot do it. You're probably going to be wrong. <laughs> I see this all the time. People try to, they think they're correcting mistakes, it's, but it's, their correction is wrong. So that's not the point. The point is just, just get together and communicate in English the best you can. It's really to help your fluency, right? Just, just practice saying things in English. Practice chatting in English. Practice communicating. That's all you, and understanding, that's all you're doing when you practice with another learner, especially lower levels. Do not try to teach each other. Do not try to correct each other, okay? Get correction from native speakers. Uh, more importantly, listen and read content from native speakers. That's where you get the correct pronunciation, the correct everything. When you practice speaking, when you're chatting with other people, learners, just communicate. You're just practicing. You're, practic you're really practicing output at that point, right? Don't worry about mistakes. Just communicate the best you can. So it's totally fine. It's, I think it's great, and you can, it can be very enjoyable to do that. Oh, cool. Jackie says, I hope I can join VIP when I get a job. Awesome. Look forward to it. Elana, good to see you. Elana Khan says, in my opinion, the biggest problem of bad days is that people just quit. Especially in the beginning. My question, how to overcome a sequence of bad days without quitting? This is a very, 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 very important question. Maybe this is the number one most important question for succeeding with learning English. In other words, to achieve your goal of being fluent or, you know, even higher. 
This is the problem. I've thought about this. I I think about this question all the time. I was thinking about it just just last night, in fact. I was thinking about this question. Because this is it. This is more important than the method. This is, you know, how which exact method you use is more important than than anything else, I think. How to deal with not just one bad day, but a lot of bad days. And how to not quit. That's the main thing. I was thinking about it myself because I was thinking in my life. I'm like, okay, I've tried a lot of things. I'm always trying new things. And I've quit a lot of things. But then some other things, I, I did not quit. And I was thinking, why? Why? And it's not just some things are easy, some things are difficult. So, for example, jujitsu. Jujitsu is very difficult, sometimes painful. <laughs> it's uh, physically painful, sometimes, certainly physically uncomfortable a lot. And uh, it's also emotionally difficult because you're getting beat and you're getting beat physically. And there's, it's, and especially when you're lower level, you know. It's definitely as a white belt for me. The first two years is a white belt. Oh man, just getting beat all the time, losing, losing, losing all the time, and and suffering. Um, but I didn't quit. I actually did quit. I quit. I took three a three year break, but I came back again. Why did I come back to it? I came back and I'm back and doing great now. And then other things I've quit much faster. That even though they were easier, they were less painful. But I tried them and I quit. I realized for myself, a lot of a lot of it's boredom. I can handle suffering better than boredom. <laughs> so, and so, but here's the point. I enjoy jujitsu. I love it. I really, really enjoy it. Even on the bad days, it's interesting to me. It's always very interesting. It's always. Um, sometimes it's frustrating, but it's always interesting and it's always, I always uh, get excited about it. Some other things, uh, like let's say bass guitar. I tried to learn guitar, bass guitar. And I just, I did not like practicing. Like I found it boring, boring, boring. And I would try to force myself. I thought, well, eventually, you know, when I play some songs, that will be fun. Probably true. But now it's super boring and I'm so bored. So I couldn't force myself to do it. So I think this is the key thing is that goals are not enough for most people. It's not enough to have a great goal. Yeah, speaking English perfectly. That would be fantastic. Of course, you can imagine how great that would be. The problem is right now you're bored or right now you're not enjoying it. So how do you... So you're trying to force yourself to do it every day. And it's, it's very, very tough to do that. Very tough to... F- I, I can't do it. I can't force myself to do something that's boring uh, for very long. I can usually do it for a month or two and then I quit. So I think this is the key thing is that you have to find a way to enjoy it every day. It's do it's even if there's a perfect method for learning English. If if it's boring, if you hate it, it's no good for you. It's better to do something else, even if it's less effective, if you like it, because then you won't quit. So this is the key thing. This is why you know people ask me, AJ, what books should I read? You know, recommend some books to read in English, and I I can't really answer the question because. The most important thing is you must enjoy the book. It must be enjoyable and interesting to you. Not to me. I have a lot of books I like, but you might hate them. They might be too difficult for you. They might be boring for you. So you've got to find it. You've got to find that answer yourself. You've got to find a way to love English. This is the thing I notice most of all. My highest level, you know, VIP learners, the the most successful students, they always find a way to have fun with English. To, to they, be, they, they love it, love it, love it. They, they, it becomes a passion for them. Some of them get into movies and slang and, and they love that. Mehdi is like, was like that. Probably still like that from Iran. Um, others 
you know, prefer uh, maybe, you know, reading books or things that are more philosophical. Others just like chatting, you know, like like this uh, group I was talking about, the VIP members. They love meeting people from all different countries and learning about different cultures and talking with people. And that's what gets them so excited. So they do that. So you've got to find a way. You've got to find a way. And sometimes it's just entertainment. Some people love, love, love my mini stories because they're funny and silly. They're not serious at all. Other people prefer things that are more serious. So this is the key thing. You've got to make it fun. Somehow you must enjoy every day, even the bad days. I enjoy even my bad days at jujitsu. I still like it. I don't want to quit. I don't walk home thinking I want to quit. I walk home thinking, oh, what happened? Why was that so bad? You know, but um, but I'm actually motivated. Like my bad days actually motivate me to, to work harder or to learn. So I have a bad day and then I come home and I start looking on at, online on videos, trying to find uh, new techniques like how do I solve this problem? <laughs> right. So that's what you need to do with English. If you have a bad day in English, you need to think, well, why? Why'd, why was why was it so hard to understand? Why was it so hard to speak? Maybe just the topic. Maybe it was just vocab. So then you maybe you find some books or videos about that topic and you learn more of the vocab. It becomes easier. It becomes a fun challenge to solve these problems. This is the key. This is why, you know, my book, the 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 first half of my book is about motivation and enjoyment. That's why it's the most important thing, much more important than which exact method. Speaking of my book, by the way, it's it's just got translated into Korean. I was going to show you the cover of the, I just received this today. I got this from the publishers today. This is the Korean version of my book. If you are in Korea or you know, uh, maybe people who are lower level or someone who doesn't, who can't read English much. They can't read the English version. It's too hard. You could have them read the Korean version. Give it as a gift. It would be a great gift. I love the cover. They did a great job. I think I like the Korean cover better than like my cover, than the English version. It's got a, got a, It's black. It looks really nice. They did a really very nice job. So this is it's, my book is now translated into Korean. There's a Spanish version of my book. What else? Um, is there Italian? I believe there's Italian. Yeah, there's a few different translations out there. Persian. All right, I'll do a few more questions. Oh, Olga asked, how can I buy your book? The English version and the Spanish version are both on Amazon and .com, Kobo.com. Most of the like online books, uh, the Korean version. I'm not sure. I need to talk to the uh, publisher. Um, I probably just at bookstores. I would imagine they're just that you can buy this on in any Korean uh, online or just walk into a bookstore, ask for it. It's just same title, effortless English. Arabic. We need an Arabic version, Zayed says. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do need a translation into Arabic. Alex Tation says, uh, your podcast reminds me that people love to help each other and share useful information. So it can be enjoyable and challenging and motivating for everyone. Yeah, this is the idea. This is why I named my website Effortless English Club. What's the club part? The club part is just this, yeah, that it's all of you uh, helping each other, right? So just as I said, my the VIP, VIP members, you know, they get together and some of them chat just with each other. Or on our Gab group, you can ask questions and you can make your own group if you want to. So this is, I, I think it's fantastic, as you said, that you can help each other, share with each other, practice together. Uh, when An says, AJ, I tried your pronunciation course. It is great. Thank you. Good to hear. 
Yes, I have a pronunciation course. It's at the same website, effortlessenglishclub.com. All my courses are there. If pronunciation is something you need to work on, then get that course. Oh, here's Mehdi. Mehdi's watching today. Awesome. Mehdi says, fluency takes time, consistency, love, and being patient are the most important factors that will lead anyone into success. No matter how hard it gets, success is waiting for you. Notice the word he used here, love. And then the second is patience. Love and patience. Love and patience. See, the love part is what's so cool. And people don't, you know, people don't talk about this. English teachers never talk about, you need to love English. You never hear the word love, right? It's always uh, study and discipline and grammar and, but. I think the love part is the most important and then patience is number two because it takes time, as he said. But when you love something, it's easier to be patient. That's why love is first. I love jujitsu. It's easier for me to be patient. I'm not so good at jujitsu, but I love it. So I am better. You know, I'm better than I was my first day. <laughs> I'm better than I was a year ago. So, but I'm still, I still lose a lot and, and uh, still have very bad days, but I love it. So it doesn't matter. I keep going. I continue. I continue. I continue. And the second, it's easier to be patient because I enjoy every day doing it. If you hate every day, being patient is very tough indeed. Very tough. If you actually hate doing it, if you hate listening to English, you hate speaking English, you hate reading English, well, yeah, you need a huge amount of patience. It's very tough to do it every day. It's very tough, especially when you have bad days. So you must find a way to enjoy it. You must find a way to love it. Govind says namaste from India. Thank you. Oh, Reggie Dante says all Brazil loves you. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Salman Wally says, how can we unlearn traditional grammar that we learned in school? It is a big obstacle in speaking English. You don't need to unlearn it. I mean, you just have to kind of forget about, you know, push it to the side. The main thing is just don't think about it when you're speaking because you have no time anyway. I think shadowing is a good technique for that. I've talked about shadowing. Do a search for shadowing, a technique developed by Dr. Alexander Argelis. Is that, I, I may be mispronouncing his last name. He's got a nice YouTube channel. And he demonstrates, he shows the shadowing technique. I've got some videos where I talk about it, shadowing. But shadowing, you know, you're basically, you're listening to an audio and speaking at the same time. So you're, you're speaking with the speaker, obviously a little bit after them. But the key point is you don't stop it. So you got to go at the same speed as the native speaker you're listening to. That can feel very difficult, but... The good thing is it kind of, because it's too fast, you cannot think about grammar. You can't worry about making mistakes. You're just doing your best to uh, imitate what the speaker is saying. Of course, the words and the grammar and the sentences, but also the pronunciation. And when you start doing this, if you do it every day, even, you know, 20 minutes a day or something like that, over time, after, you know, several months, it can help you... Uh, break that bad habit because that is it can be a bad habit developed from school that we call it par paralysis by analysis <laughs> a little phrase in english but it means that you're you're analyzing you're thinking so much about different grammar rules and worrying about making mistakes and trying to be so perfect that it kills your fluency right it's hard you, you it's hard to get any words out because you're constantly thinking about grammar too, too much. You don't want to do that. And when you're writing, you can do that. But when you're speaking, you don't want to do that. So I think shadowing is a nice 
solution to that or give it a try. Oh, cool. Ketson says, "My hi, my favorite teacher. I am from Tibet. My name is Ketson. Hello to you in Tibet and to all Tibetans out there. Zayed says, the secret of speaking English like a native is just listening to every, to AJ every day. That will help. <laughs> it will indeed. Denal Gax says, I need accent reduction lessons. Get my pronunciation course. Same website, effortlessenglishclub.com. Uh, Fabricio Talison says, hi, teacher. I'm so happy because I can understand you so much very easily. Good job, teacher. Thank you. Come here to Brazil. Uh, we have jujitsu. Yes, I know. I love it too. Oh, good. You do jujitsu. Fantastic. That would be fun to do a, I've talked about that before to do a jujitsu like trip in Brazil. That would be very fun. Okay, let's see what time. Uh, okay, a couple more, and I'll go for uh, maybe five more minutes. Which country am I from? The United States. I'm from America. Mohammed Shahab says, uh, "Sir, sir, your teaching method is flawless. You're doing monumental and a, a monumental and gigantic job." Nice vocab. I appreciate your efforts a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, here's an interesting question. Where is it? I just, where was it? Here we go. Mr. Danny says, Nice to see you again. Can you explain one more time how we can visualize our goal with colors and get back to it when we do not want to study or work? All right. So I talk about this in my book, Visualizing. So, you know, you close your eyes and you try to create a movie imagining yourself doing your goal, right? Achieving your goal as it already happened. It's happening now. So in this case, if you're trying to speak English, you could imagine yourself having a conversation in English and, you know, the words are coming out easily and quickly. The other person is smiling and understanding you. And then you try to make, you know, it's like a TV in your mind. You try to make the picture bigger in your mind, add colors, make it more colorful. Um, and in this way, you can, uh, you know, kind of, it can help short term, give you a little bit better feeling, help your motivation. It's a visualization technique. However, my bigger point from today is that you've got to, if you, that is helpful short term, but long term, you really must enjoy doing what you're doing. For you, that means English. You've got to enjoy listening. You've got to enjoy reading. And eventually, you've got to enjoy speaking. How do you do that? Well, for like for listening, you have to find things you enjoy listening to that are easy enough that it's not stressful. The topics are interesting to you. The voice, the person's voice, you like the person's voice. You know, all of these things. Well, then you can listen and no problem. You, you enjoy it. So it's easy to do every day. But if you, on the other hand, if you try to study grammar textbooks every day, if you hate that, most people don't like it. Most people find that very boring and stressful. Can you do it one day? Yes. Can you do it one week? Yes. In school... Can you do it? Yes, they're forcing you to do it. You have the fear of bad grades. So you kind of force yourself to do it because of that fear. But after school, when you graduate, when you're out, you're independent. It's very difficult, very, very difficult 
to force yourself to do that every day when you hate it. Yes, you can do it for a week, maybe a couple months, but eventually you probably will quit if you hate it, if it's no fun, if it's not enjoyable at all, it's not interesting. So much more important, find some audio that you love, even just this show I'm doing right now. You like the topic, you like my voice, great. If you don't <laughs> like my topics, if you don't like my voice, find another one. There are a lot of people doing this, so you can find a different one. Different voice, different topics, audiobooks, my lessons, the, the mini stories. A lot of people like those because they're fairly easy. They are funny, not so serious. A lot of people love them. If you don't love them, then focus on the main lesson. Focus on the commentary lessons, which are usually more serious and more difficult. That's why I one of the reasons I have different kinds of lessons. All right, we've just got a couple more minutes and then time to go. Okay, remember the comment, guys, don't spam the comments. You put a comment one time only, and that's all. <laughs> Shiracha says, I like your voice so much. Thank you, Shiracha. That's very nice. Oh, here's Mehdi again. Mehdi says, Coach, the way I see it... Oop. Sorry, he just jumped on my screen. Let me find him again. <laughs> uh, where's the comment? Here it is. Coach, the way I see it, the main reason most of the English learners get disappointed and feel bummed out, which means feel sad, depressed, through this long journey is jumping from one branch to another. That's an interesting comment, too. So, so what Maddie's saying, jumping one branch to another means jumping around like not... Just staying with one method, not staying with um, one one teacher, one something. So, like, you know, Maddie did Effortless English, and he, he kind of found what worked for him. Effortless English, and I know he did a lot of movies and TV shows and idioms. Kind of casual English, a lot of that. So he found that. He found what worked for him. Effortless English plus movies, let's say. And Mehdi, you know, probably did more, but let's just say that, for example. So then he just, he said, okay, I'm just going to do this. And he focused on that, doing it, doing it, doing it. He enjoyed it. it. He was getting success with it. He didn't jump again and start trying to read grammar books or, oh, now I'm going to go do something else. He just stayed with that because it's working. So it's also a very good point. You know, I can use jujitsu as an example. So I, you know, I've got like... Uh, you know, I, my club, my gym, they're part of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. And I found Gracie Jiu-Jitsu and I love it and it's perfect for me. There are other kinds of uh, Jiu-Jitsu with different, um, kind of different cultures, different approach to teaching. Um, and But I'm not going to jump around and go, I could go to an MMA gym. I could go, I'm not doing that. I'm just I'm kind of sticking with this one now. And that, that's it, just... And that's been great for me. So that's a good point too. Don't when you find something that is working that's enjoyable for you, stay with it. Keep doing it. Do what works. If it's working, don't change it. Keep doing it. If it's not working, that's when you change. Oh, cool, Douglas. Uh, Akamine says, AJ, hey I've been your student for a while. I learned a lot with you. Thanks so much. Thanks very much. Now I'm learning Japanese. I'm basically the same methods that I learned from VIP. Awesome. Yes, of course, the, these methods, the general methods work for other languages too. Very cool. Good luck. Okay, this will have to be the last one next. Okay, I'll go. Uh, Look, bum says, uh, when I don't have much time to learn with your courses, I listen to your podcast, this show, while driving. 
I feel like I'm missing something when I don't listen to you. My life has been better since I followed you. Thanks, AJ. See, that's also a good good point. Oh, and Julia Taquita says hi, and good to see you, Julia. So this is also good. Like, so a lot of people do this, and I think this is very good to do, especially when you are at the uh, intermediate level. What I mean by this is you find one or a, one or two people, it can just be one person, that you really like. You like their style. You like their method of teaching. You like their pronunciation, everything. You like their personality. And just focus on them. Like, you know, for, for a lot of you, that's me. So sometimes you can do my lessons, which are more focused for really learning, like learning vocabulary and learning... Um, you know, pronunciation or whatever. But other times, you maybe you're just, you don't have time or you're a little tired. You don't want to do a lesson. So you just listen to the show that I'm doing, which is more relaxed, it's casual. This is not a lesson. You know, I did a little bit of vocab today, but uh, it's, it's much more relaxed, this show, this video or podcast. So you can mix it, but you're still listening to me. So you get used to my way of speaking and it becomes easier and easier for you and that's fine for a while not forever <laughs> but for a while especially at intermediate level it's fine just listen to me and read you can read my book listen to my audiobook get all my courses and lessons listen to my show i have a huge amount a very large amount of content audios videos courses a book right all this and this will get you up close to advanced level just with me. And then when you're ready, you can add more people, different shows, different podcasts, different books. Maybe like uh, Mehdi, you start doing TV shows and movies, and this will get you into higher levels at more advanced levels. But it's fine for a while to just focus on one or two people. That's totally fine. You know, they, they have a good speaking speed for you. All of this is important. So totally, totally fine. And I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I'm and happy to be that person for you. All right, thank you. So I'll, I said I'd review the vocab at the end. So let's do it. From today's video, we had, I wrote it down. We had a buffer. A buffer is kind of like a, you know, like a, like padding. It's a space between two things. Chinks in the armor means weak points. Chinks in the armor means weak points. To mess up, to mess up means to make a mistake. To get away with something, to get away with. In this situation, to get away with something means uh, do something wrong, but not get punished. Do some make a mistake without punishment or without a bad result. You get away with it. And tit for tat means kind of equal. It's kind of like eye for an eye. Tit for tat. Eye for an eye it means uh, in this case, we're talking about fighting. So sometimes they win, sometimes you win. It's kind of back and forth. It's kind of equal level. Tit for tat. They do something to you, you do something to them. They do something to you, you do something to them. It's kind of an equal back and forth, tit for tat. All right, join my VIP program. Start your own speaking group. Get on Gab and just say, I'm starting my own group. Who wants to join? Let's practice speaking English. You can do that just like my VIP members are doing it. You can do it too. You can try my VIP program for just $1.00. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Lots of love to you. See you next time.